I looked back to see what kind of videos I was making at this time last year with the precipices, the, the precipice, the precipice of, uh, of my regular job looming. And so what I was doing, I had the big ash crossbow and I was doing a little wily coyote action. Well, let's cause a little more mayhem and destruction today. This, the final bow that I will show before I am back to work. And so what I had was this, this, a start on an ash bow. I did a long time ago, back when I felt that all English longbows had rounded bellies. Strike one in my court, opening myself up for, for dispute and retribution. But I had this, this stave, ash, and it was a rounded belly thing that didn't have a narrowed handle right here. But I was looking at this thing, and I didn't work it because one of the limbs had deflex and a recurve on the tip, and the other one was just dead straight. And so I did have a little issue with tillering this and heat bending it, getting it straight, so the tiller doesn't look perfectly like a board bow type of tiller because it's got a little wonk in it. But it turned out nicely. Number two in getting myself into trouble. You're looking at this and you're saying, well, that's a, a moligo bay or a molly gabbit or however you want to pronounce it. Let's not play the, the word police game here. It's not a true one because it doesn't go in this far. Well, I say pish posh. Because who's to say that all of them were like this? Maybe found one. Maybe found two fragments. That doesn't mean that the entirety of that species looked alike. Because the difference in, differences in individual bows in a, in a region could be as different as the number of people in that region. So I just did it for more of a stylistic approach. And maybe it does add a little bit of speed. But this thing, <laughs> oh, it's long. For you to see the entire thing, I'm going to have to be back in the next county. It's, uh, I think, 74 inches long because, again, I was going for a rounded belly. But you can see I done flattened it out just to make it so it's not going to get compression issues or string follow. And if it does get a little string follow, you know what I can do? This is ash. I'll just heat treat the belly. It responds good to that. I'll take that as it comes. But anyway, a rougher handle than I normally do, but I'm trying to go for that paleolithic look and no paint just the back now I have uh, three beautiful maple staves that I cut one was of relatively small diameter so it didn't lend itself I could either make two of these out of that that round or I could make one that had an exaggerated handle and I'm looking at it Suppose me and my, my partner back in the day had this beautiful maple stave. Would we make two bows out of it or would we just want, well, I want a thicker handle in it. So heck with you. I'm just going to make my own bow out of it and throw all the rest away in, in waste. Well, I don't think they would have done stuff. They would have had a thinner handle. In fact, this one, look at what's poking out. You can see the pith. <laughs> it's a pithy bow. Um, which means this was a very small diameter stave. And look at this. I got a quite a sizable bow out of it. But lest I bore the crap out of you. And I'm going to make a either a hemp string for it or a, a linen string. I This is going to be 100% an organic bow. But yeah, I, I like this. And ooh, look at that. It's been greased, greased it and uh, waxed. Let's got 15 yards set up here to the board of death. Let's see if I can hit it. I hit it. I killed my cardboard for today. Let's see if I can kill that cardboard again. Killed it. Ugh, did I hit the arrow? No, almost. But anyway, yeah, this is actually for a 74-inch bow, and I don't know what it is. 50 pounds, maybe. I didn't scale it. Something like that. And I'm not even... I didn't even draw it back to 28, I don't think. Pretty fast bow, and it 
you know that and I think the design is good I think those maple bows I'm gonna make are gonna be like this and the elm the alum that I'm gonna cut the tree is pr exactly that big around just think about how many of these things I could get out of that that elm tree if I'm gonna cut it lengthwise down to the center again you know so it opens up like this and it doesn't twist get the pie shaped sections after I do that and up here near my tips, maybe two bows, and then go down, get it down to a growth ring again, another bow. So out of each pie-shaped section, um, and I'm thinking in that thing, maybe six, holy cow. You know, I might get 15 bows just out of one section of trunk, and I'm thinking, economy. Anyway, it's the bonus. I'm going to get my arrows and I'm going to go back here. You can leave if you want. Adjust this a second. Here I am. If I get down here. You know, you're saying this is a super de duper long bow. Let me get down here and prove that you can shoot this like from the ground. You can get the air on the thing. In conclusion, I like this bow. Second conclusion, I've been watching Mick Grucock videos. If you haven't heard of Mick Grucock, look him up. We miss you, Gr Mick. That's all, folks.